Okay, so we're back in, in tutorial 2.2 and we're going to continue and solve for the uh, stresses in the concrete and steel. So based on the uh, service moment of 70. So using MY over I, we're going to have uh, moment service times this distance divided by I will equal the stress in the concrete. So M MS C over I cracked will equal stress in the concrete. So we got 70 times 10 to the 6 uh, Newton millimeters times 118.3 is the C divided by 1.07 times 10 to the 9. 70 e to the 6 times 118.3 divided by 1079 stress is 7.73 MPA and uh, we can work out the uh, stress in the steel over N by using some of our triangles so FS over N is to this distance which is 550 minus 118.3 550 minus 118.3 which is 431.7 and that is what FC 7.73 is to C 118.3 so we can solve for FS over N by just uh, rearranging 431.7 times 7.73 divided by 118.3. That's going to give us 28.2 MPA, but FS will be N times the 28.2, the real stress in the steel. So that's going to be 8.11 times 28.2, right? N times this is the stress. So that's 228.7 So the force in the steel will just be the area of the steel, 600 times the stress, 600 millimeters squared times the 228.7. That's going to be 137.2 kilonewtons. And then if we do the same thing for force in the concrete, we would get one half of the stress, 7.73 times the 118.3 times the width of the section, 300. So the force in the concrete equals 0 0.5 times 7.73, so 118.3 times 300 divided by thou. That gives me 137, 137.2 uh, kilonewtons. And, and that basically balances the force in the concrete, balances the force in the steel. And whenever you take static moments about an axis and balance the uh, ADs, uh, if you find a Y bar, there's only one place where that will happen for a crack section, and one place that will happen for a growth section. We've seen that here. Here, that for the growth section, it was at 305.8, and for the crack, it's 118.3. For those two cases, you'll always get the forces balancing in the section. If you choose another neutral axis arbitrarily, that will mean that you have added an additional axial load. In order for those, fa those forces, the residual leftover force will have to be because there was an axial load on the section. And that's very important to remember because th there's an interaction equation between moment and axial and as you step through the neutral axis the uh, moment is influenced by the axial load sometimes it's strengthening it, sometimes it's reducing it but we'll get more into that later, that's a more complicated concept today I just want to talk about the cracked inertia how to calculate it for a rectangular section